From FC Cincinnati winning their first Supporters' Shield, to expansion side St. Louis City SC taking the league by storm, to, of course, the GOAT Lionel Messi joining the league, the 2023 MLS season has been a year filled with unprecedented successes, both for clubs and players. But today we'll be focusing on the latter, creating what I would consider to be the 2023 MLS Best 11, also known as the 2023 MLS Team of the Year. And a quick disclaimer that this is not going to be your typical Team of the Week, Team of the Year mashup in which the 11 players with the most goal contributions are just shoved into a team no matter how cohesively they fit. No. In fact, I am looking to create the best actual team on the field from MLS players, of course, only with the 2023 season in mind. So with that said, my team of the year will employ a 4-4-2 diamond formation, which I believe will get the best out of the options available, starting, of course, in the goalkeeper position, which is the easiest pick of the lot. It is St. Louis City SC's goalkeeper, Roman Berkey, who will be named Goalkeeper of the Year shortly and probably deserved an MVP nomination as well. Now, if you don't believe me there, there's only one metric that you need to see to change your mind, and that is goals prevented. It is the best way we have to measure goalkeepers nowadays, and for those stats nerds out there, all this metric is is a measure of the expected goals on target that a goalkeeper faces minus the actual goals that they conceded. For example, a couple top goalkeepers like Stefan Fry and Andre Blake fall in the 4 range. Georgi Petrovic is up at 5.3, and the Earthquakes' Daniel is smashing 99% of the league with 7.8 goals prevented this season. But Roman Berkey has prevented 12 goals this season. Well, technically 12.1, but that is utterly incredible. He is miles ahead of the rest of the league, and you really don't need to know much more than that to include him in your team of the year, but he brings you more, of course, as he is a captain and a leader out of the back. Everything that you would want in a goalkeeper, get him into my team immediately. On to the defenders, and we're going to start on the right side of the back line, where it is admittedly the least competitive position in MLS, Partly due to the lack of quality, but more because the best right backs in MLS are actually wing backs, or they play in a back five. We're talking about the likes of Julian Gressel or Brooks Lennon, and that is great. They get a ton of goal contributions, but it makes it difficult to pick them in a 4-4-2 team of the year. In fact, I'm actually looking for two-dimensional fullbacks that are not just great on the offensive end, but solid defensively as well, and Ryan Hollingshead fits this perfectly. He admittedly had a questionable all-star selection mid-season, but that gave him the confidence to get back into top form and back to the best right back in MLS. With 1.6 interceptions per game, 1.9 clearances per game, two successful tackles per game, and a 71% tackle success win rate while scoring four goals on the offensive end. And that is the type of two-way player that will fit perfectly into my 4-4-2 diamond. Into the center backs then, where I simply could not decide between FC Cincinnati's two best center backs, Matt Miazga and Yersin Mosquera. So, at the expense of the rest of the league, I decided simply to pick them both. And it's not just because they are two of the best center backs in MLS this season, which they absolutely are, but it's also because they provide the perfect balance for one another, with Mosquera being the Rolls-Royce type center back, doing all the pretty things, and Miazga, the old school, hard nose type of center back, doing those dirty work. Not that each of them don't do both of those jobs. But where Miazga is a little bit lesser, Mosquera is more, and vice versa. What do I mean by that? Well, let me explain. Where Miazga has 0.6 tackles per game with an impressive 65.4% success rate, Mosquera has 1.4 tackles per game, tied for the most in MLS with an unbelievable 82.2% success rate. The same can be said about interceptions, where Miazga has a solid 1.3 but Mosquera is elite with 1.8 interceptions per game. And those pretty statistics are important, but you also need a guy who will do the dirty work. 
Not that Mascara won't with four clearances per game, but Miazga's 5.1 clearances per game is sensational. The same with blocks, where Mascara does it with 0.6 blocks per game, but Miazga's one block per game is incredible. But really, where these two excel and are the absolute best in MLS is their dual percentages, both on the ground and in the air, they are the highest of any defender in MLS to have played 2,000 or more minutes this season. Starting on the ground, Mosquera has 61.8% of his duels won. That is really an incredible number, and I feel the need to hammer that point home because Miazga has blown that out of the water with 71.5% of his ground duels won this season. And Mosquera has had significantly more duels, suggesting his willingness to do the dirty work, but again, Miazga is simply better at it. The same can be said in the air, where Mosquera has 65.9% of headed duels won, again, a very impressive number, but Miazga again blows it out of the water, with 73.4% of aerial duels won, that is just truly mind-boggling. So as you can see, they are not only two of the best center backs in all of MLS, but they complement each other perfectly, and therefore, they are my starting center back duo. The last piece of my back line then, my left fullback, where again, I want a two-dimensional player, so instead of going for defensive solidity in somebody like Diego Palacios, or an attacking threat with somebody like John Tolkien, I went for the best of both worlds in Kai Wagner. He has 1.6 interceptions per game, 1.5 successful tackles per game with a 65.6% win rate and 0.6 blocks per game, while again contributing heavily on the offensive end with a goal and 7 assists. That ability to contribute on both ends of the pitch ensures that he is going to fit perfectly in my 4-4-2 diamond and round out my back line. Hey, if you're looking for MLS content on YouTube, this is the channel for you. So hit that like and subscribe button and join the Upper 90 community. Thank you so much and back to the video. Moving into the midfield, starting with that single pivot defensive midfielder position where I have gone for another FC Cincinnati player in Obina in Wobodo. And this really is a no brainer, although it is unfortunate that my team doesn't have a true eight because both Hector Herrera and Edward Lovin deserve team of the year selections. But as we progress into the attacking positions, you'll see that's a trend. Probably 20 or more players deserve a team of the year selection but only 11 can actually receive one. And Nwobodo absolutely falls in that latter category. He has the most tackles won in MLS with 62 this season or 2.2 per 90 with a 71.4% success rate. That is unbelievable in the middle of the park. It would be fantastic for a defender to have that level of success rate, but to have that as a defensive midfielder is really incredible. He also has the fourth most interceptions in the league with 55 or 1.9 per game. And yes, he doesn't play a single six in Cincinnati, but with those numbers, I'm sure he would be the best player in the league to fill that position this season. Into the wide midfielder positions then, and we will actually start on the left side with Atlanta United's Thiago Almada. And you can probably guess why Almada has been moved out to the left rather than his normal attacking midfielder position at the 10. And yes, there are players who fit this position better, namely Ryan Gold, but I simply could not leave out Thiago Almada. The MVP finalist has the most big chances created in MLS this season with 25, leading to the most assists in MLS with 16, while tagging along nine non-penalty goals. Therefore, in fact, excluding the penalties, Almada leads the entire league in direct goal contributions with 25. So he may not fit the position perfectly, but he does actually like to operate mostly off the left, coming in on his right, whether that's picking the final pass or curling in that shot that we know he can do. And so therefore, he absolutely has to make my team of the year as a left midfielder. Over to the right side of midfield then, and likely the most shock inclusion of my team of the year for many of you, Christian Espinoza, the 
San Jose Earthquakes right winger who will fit into a right midfield position for my team. And let me tell you, he made it for a reason. Espinoza leads the league in key passes with 93. He leads the league in chances created with 102 or 3 per game. He leads the league in expected assists with 13.3 or 0.39 per game. And maybe the reason that he's underrated is because those 13.3 expected assists only garnered him 8 actual assists. Meanwhile, a player like Thiago Almada had 10.9 expected assists and recorded 16 ex actual assists. A good striker matters, as we can see, which is why Espinoza's underlying numbers are actually better than Almada, even though Almada has the higher output. So Espinoza is not blessed with a top striker in the way that Almada has Iacomakis. So while being one of the most creative players in the league, Espinoza is actually also the Quakes' leading goal scorer with 14 goals, tied with their striker Abobasi on nine non-penalty goals. So you can see the all-round contribution that he makes and, importantly, how creative he is. Into the attacking midfielder position then, and do I even need to explain this pick? Luciano Acosta, the heavy favorite for MVP. He is going to be named that and obviously deserves, therefore, to be in the team of the year in his natural position in the number 10, where he operates under two strikers, albeit in a different formation, but it will work similarly well in my team of the year for him. And other than per 90 chance creation, where he has 3.3 per game tied with Almada for the most in the league, Acosta doesn't actually lead many statistical categories, but he is top three or five in so many attacking statistics, exemplifying his ability to be the hub for his team, and that's exactly the role he would play for my team of the year, facilitating everything with the help of the wide midfielders to feed those strikers. And with that said, we'll go into those two strikers, starting with the Golden Boot winner, Denny Bawanga. He has the second most direct non-penalty goal contributions this season, with 23 behind Almada, and his 20 goals have resulted from a meager 14.42 XG, which is truly mind-boggling and the best XG over performance in the league. And further, if you were to take away those three penalties that he scored, that gap would become even bigger and more impressive. So if not for Luciano Acosta, Bawanga would be taking home the MVP along with his golden boot. And it's a no-brainer as that first striker. Next to him is a much more difficult selection, but I have gone with Georgis Yakamakis to partner the Golden Boot winner, and he is, of course, the newly named MLS Newcomer of the Year. And I know that a lot of people would think, how is this not Cucho Hernandez, who scored 18 goals this season? But Cucho had six penalties. Yakamakis scored 17 goals with no penalties. Cucho also led the league with 21.5 expected goals, which he therefore underperformed. Yakamakis had 12.6 expected goals this season, thus overperforming heavily. And so, therefore, it isn't just Almada Bias providing him a bunch of chances. He's actually way overperforming the chances that he's been given. And so, Yakamakis has simply been the second best striker in MLS this season and deserves to partner Denny Bawanga. But that does leave a ton of snubs from this team with the likes of Ryan Gold, Cucho Hernandez, Hector Herrera, Carles Gil, Rodriguez, Palacios, Tolkien, etc. So tell me in the comments, who should I have included? Who would make your MLS team of the year? And if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and subscription as well. It really, really helps out the channel. I will see you next time.